Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video and another episode of my F1 2018 career mode. Today we are here for the Russian Grand Prix, round number 16 of the season. And if you guys did miss round 15 for the Italian, sorry, for the Singapore Grand Prix actually, then do check out that episode by clicking the card in the top right hand corner of your screen to go watch that race. Now today, here at Russia, you can see the laptop for yourself. It's not looking great. We have more rain in store. We had, I think, two races with no rain at all, and the rain is back, and in a big, big way. We've got four wet conditions expected for the race. For this race, though, we do have two upgrades, one for the engine, one for the aero. Both of them are minor upgrades. However, it's still a double upgrade of sorts, and hopefully, fingers crossed, these two upgrades should take us above Ferrari if they haven't brought any upgrades of their own. Let's confirm that now real quick. Let's look at the iron. And there you go, we are the second best team now overtaking Ferrari and uh, actually Saba also, which actually surprised me quite a bit at the time, have brought no upgrades for this race, which has given us a chance to just close the gap to them slightly. Um, but the bad news is we're not, we're not going to be able to put any up upgrades on our car at all today. If you look at the points in the top right and also, um, bear in mind we don't do practice, we only do qualifying and race to try and keep the R&D competitive, to not be too OP. Um, I don't think we're going to have enough points. And one way is I'm going to try and set up a few points and try and go for a big upgrade spend in the next episode. So um, that's probably the plan going forward. But for this race weekend, we arrive here at Sochi. And it's a track that I don't really like. It's probably my least favorite track in the calendar, I have to be honest. Um, I just There's just nothing about it that I like. There really isn't. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling too confident. I've got to be honest. It's going to be a tricky one. I think even getting best of the rest in terms of getting third behind the Sabres or second behind Leclerc is going to be a challenge. So let's see how it goes. It's going to be, you know, 18 minutes of qualifying. Anything can happen. Three runs. Hyper soft tyres around here, and uh, yeah, we're going to go straight into it. Now, I will admit my best run was my final run in qualifying. Uh, just a note, again, we had another failure in qualifying this time. Uh, this one not as bad. It's going to actually not affect us. We're still going to get three runs in. Now, here's a problem that I had in this qualifying session, and it's probably going to be the title of the video. I had a qualifying glitch. Um, basically, on my first run, you can see here, I validate my lap, and I run wide. Fair enough. But what I did was I kept on going. I kept on pushing to try and get a reference time with some reference uh, delta and sector times uh, for the next run. But then as you can see, towards the final sector, I make a mistake, I lose the back end and I actually crash. And I tried to avoid hitting the ball there, but I just knocked off my end plate. But fair enough, um, I thought, okay, I'm just going to come in then because I've, I've lost, I've ruined the laps. I'm not going to be able to uh, get the reference delta time. So I came to the pit lane, um, which was fine. You know, I've got no problem with that. That's fair enough. And it's just a simple mistake. But then on my second run, you can see how I run wide through this right hand right about now. Uh, keep it just about within the track limits though as we now go into the next right through sector two and this time I couldn't keep it in the limits and we run off the track and get another invalidation there for track extension and then I, I kept on finishing the lap again because I wanted to see what was wrong and the car felt understeery for some reason so towards the end of the lap I brought up the MFD and here you can see I just paused it for a second I've still got front wing damage from my last run even though I've been into the pits and I've changed my tyres so what I did was I went to the pit lane the second time and I purposely put on the menu, I wanted to repair my front wing damage. I came in, I went back out on another set of tyres and I've still got front wing damage on my final run. So pretty much we are screwed. Uh, I've got to try and do qualifying with a damaged front wing because for some reason I can't seem to get a front wing change. So that's pretty ridiculous. Not really sure how that's happened. But yeah, this was my one and only and best lap of the session as you'd expect. Uh, with 1 minute 15 o'clock to go and it's going to be a handicapped lap with obviously front wing damage so let's run on board and let's see if we can try and salvage something here and uh, even with the damage try and set a half decent lap straight away for turn two you're looking at the 100 meter board down to fourth maybe third gear you want to really get on these inside curves without extending or cutting to invalidate your lap time then flat out through the very fast turn three corner here and now down towards turn four it's all about opening up the line as much as you can and then bring it over to the apex don't want to worry just about keep it in the track limits there and now sector one draws to a close we go to sector two again these corners are so tricky with the understeer on the front wing and uh, i was really trying hard to not invalidate my lap time because it's so easy to just pick up the understeer with a with the damage and run wide you can see also uh, the lap's not been too bad so far you know pretty smooth uh, straightforward no real mistakes and to the naked eye it looks pretty good but we are slow we are pretty damn slow i've got to admit uh the, the, the pace isn't there and as you can see we're now on the back straight so far we've survived the middle sector no invalidations which is good as we now go into the final and third sector of that 1.3 down here on the pole time as we now go through the probably the most trickiest sector because you need all that mechanical grip and downforce and we just don't 
have that, you know, for the quick change of direction for the chicanes. The front end just isn't working for me and it's taking me so much longer to get through these slow corners here. And uh, we still keep the car on the track, no cuts and validations. Now a couple more corners to go here, missing my apex a little bit there, running a little bit wide. And then one more corner to go here and re-attacking that curb, opening up the taps and we cross the line P16, 1.7 off the pace, which would let her be an even bigger gap because the Leclerc would cross the line and uh, set an absolute ridiculous lap. He would take pole and the nearest car, Marcus Ericsson, would be a second behind Charles Leclerc. Leclerc dominating, taking pole by one second over the next nearest, like, literally, challenger, and we finished well over two seconds behind. So, a bit annoying, a very, very severe uh, handicap in this session, and it, it could be, you know, it could prove to be critical for the championship. This could ruin it right here for me if I don't turn it around in the race. Luckily, we have the wet conditions in the race tomorrow, but even then, I've got a massive hill to climb. But let's see how it goes. It's time for round 16 and the race for the Russian Grand Prix. You didn't spend much time practicing. Are you saving your car for the main event? Were those faults a bad omen for qualifying and the race? Appreciate your time. Welcome one and all to the Russian Grand Prix. We're just a stone's throw from the Georgian border here at Sochi as we get ready to begin the race that served up an absolute cracker back in 2015. A last lap collision between Kimi Raikkonen and Valtteri Bottas sparked controversy in that race, so let's hope the racing is just as tight today. It's a 3.6 mile lap here at a rain-soaked Sochi Autodrome, where I wouldn't be at all surprised to see a safety car at some point during today's Grand Prix. 18 corners here, 12 to the right and 6 to the left, and turn 3 is a long double apex left that's virtually flat out in the dry. But we probably won't be seeing any of that today. Anthony Davidson joins me again for the race today. Let's talk about Martinez. They're starting towards the back of the field today in a car that is fast, so they'll be disappointed, won't they? They'll have a sinking feeling as they look up from the cockpit and realise they're in a different postcode to the start line for sure. But the one positive they can hold on to is that the car is quick and they can make their way through the field. Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and Marcus Ericsson completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Alonso, Vettel, Kimi Raikkonen and Ricardo, Verstappen, Sainz, Hülkenberg and Sergio Perez, Grosjean, Ocon, Lewis Hamilton and Bottas, Gasly, Magnussen. They've taken a grid penalty. Martinez and Brendan Hartley. Stroll and Sergei Sorokin rounds off the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. Right, here we are then on the grid. P17 at an absolutely soaked Sochi Autodrome. It's raining cats and dogs here, monsoon conditions, and the full wets are strapped onto every single car. Now, after yesterday's disaster in qualifying, we've got it all to do in the race, and I'm kind of hoping that my wet weather pace, you know, that I've had in some tracks where I've been really, really quick, kind of shines through today because we need a miracle. You know, Leclerc's on pole, and... Um, with P17, the tracks that come up that are coming up after this race don't exactly suit me. So, yeah, it's not looking good. So, um, I was really hoping to win this race, even though I knew I didn't have good pace around here in the dry. The wet does give me a good opportunity, and I was hoping to qualify third or fourth, and then start the race in the wet, and then try and go for the win in the wet conditions, um, starting a lot further up. So, we're gonna have to do it from a lot further back on the grid. Can we do it? We we'll have to find out. Strategy is going to play a key part, whether it's a one stop or a two stop. Um, you can see on screen the game's even saying to just not do any pit stops at all. So we'll see how that one pans out. Fuel wise, I'm taking a big, big risk. I am running the lowest possible fuel, aka 2.2 laps less. Very, very light, as light as I could possibly be for this race. And hopefully the car will just save fuel as the race goes on because I'm going to try and be super light at the start, be really aggressive, and make up those positions straight away. And hopefully the light car really does pay off, and we can make up those places. And later on, we can try and save fuel later on in the ground. Pre but with that being said, we're going to jump into it here, and let's see how the race goes. It's a massive challenge. If we turn this around, it's going to be a miracle. But, uh, you know, miracles can happen, and I'm willing to try and chase it down. So let's get into it. It's time for round 16, the Russian Grand Prix. Let's go. All right, here we go. Let's build up the revs. And get ready for the five red lights here at Sochi. The lights are on and they are off. 
and away we go here. Wow, there's so much spray. Visibility extremely poor. Conditions extremely poor as well. There's been some contact there through turn one. You can barely see though. I've got a stroll going around my outside here. We're going to go down the inside of turn one. Very late on the brakes. Down the inside of multiple cars. We're going to get pinched by Ocon, but we're going to get the move. And there we go. Five places gained. Very good start. Lunging the car down turn one. We're going to make an adjustment to the brake bars. Put on 54. A little bit more to the front because I don't trust my rears. Look how poor the visibility is though. I can barely see the apex. Literally, I can't even see the next corner. We can use Lee Mix for now whilst we're stuck in traffic. It's a good opportunity to uh, get fuel on target early on. But that's already paid off. P12, great start. Really, really poor visibility though. I can't see a damn thing. I can't see where the apex is, which is kind of stopping me from pushing really as much as I'd like. But that's okay. We'll just, you know, follow the car in front. A bit wide through there, gotta be careful. This is really tangent. I've never seen such dense spray before. I've got a mod on which uh, makes the spray a lot more than what it is in the game by itself. But even with the mod, I've had this mod on for like literally months now, and I've never seen this amount of spray. This is something else. This is so, uh, either way, we've saved a bit of fuel already on the two lap mark, but now we're gonna try and uh, leave it in standard and actually use the lighter car to our advantage. And hopefully, we can use some ERS to really get past these guys. Obviously. We had an ERS upgrade for this race, so hopefully that will pay off. But for now, I just need to wait for the opportunity here and the chance to maybe go down the inside of someone because right now visibility is just so, so poor. The back end feels very loose on the car as well. So I've got to give the back end the respect it deserves. But anyway, lap one draws to a, clo uh, to a close. They're close setting the pace up front, which is uh, to be expected as we click that ball hard. Good exit out the final corner, actually. We're going to get the run on Grosjean. We don't really get the toe though, Grosjean gets the toe from Sainz, so we're going to have to dip back in for a second helping. Can we get past the Haas down towards turn one? To be fair, he's holding decent straight line speed. Late on the brakes, I'm very hot and I've completely missed turn one. I'm going to have to slow down there and let Grosjean take that one back. Got that one really bad, judged that one poorly. Oof, back end's getting loose through here, this ain't good. Right, let's get a head down. I need to focus. Oh my god, the car gets so loose through turn three. The AI can go flat, which is really annoying because the AI have inbuilt traction control. So they can go flat through there. We're nowhere near flat. Right now, Ericsson's holding up a train for second place. You can see there's a pretty long train there, about another second. So obviously, Leclerc doing what you'd expect them to do. But uh, we can start making our way past these guys, and that'd be great. But at the minute, I'm kind of similar place to Grosjean, if I have to be honest with myself. Right, another personal best. Still pretty much 1.7 off Leclerc setting the pace. However, I've made a few tweaks. Differential down to 50. I was trying to open up the differential a bit. Brake bias, I've changed from 52 all the way up to 56 to have a bit more front end braking. And I've actually requested a front wing change for the next pit stop. So I'm going to go down from level 4 to level 3. Now, you might be thinking, why have I gone less? And the reason being is because I want more stability on the rear end. So I'm going to take away a bit of front wing to have a bit more of a... Um, contrast between the front and the rear end that should give me a bit more stability in turn on the back end when it comes to attacking corners which is kind of what I'm lacking at the minute to really find the lap time that I need okay the adjustments seem to be working found a lot of pace in that final sector the Claude just set at 46.9 so we're starting to catch up to his lap time so we're starting to put the pressure on Grosjean once again here we're also starting to re pull away from Ocon behind but it looks like we're starting to feel confident again. Starting to get that confidence in the wet conditions. It's taking me a little bit longer than I would have liked, but we are getting there. Grosjean runs deep into turn two. It's a poor exit out of turn three, although through here, I just cannot match the AI for grip and traction. They just, with traction control, they keep it flat pretty much, and now I can't keep up. But we are starting to build the pressure now behind the hassle of Grosjean here, and the Frenchman's starting to see me just behind these mirrors, even though there won't be much visibility there. Bit wide through there, just uh, getting out of shape, trying too hard to put Grosjean under pressure. I'm actually making a mistake by myself, but Grosjean's struggling a bit now for pace, and uh, we're knocking on his door. Okay, to the left. Oof. Let's try and get this move done on Grosjean here. Late on the brakes into turn two around the outside. Yes, please. Job done. Finally passed Roman Grosjean here. 
now we can chase after signs. We're on the cusp of the top 10 already. I'm definitely near the limit of my pace though. I haven't got that much pace. I reckon I've got enough in the tank to get a second, but I can't match Leclerc who currently is setting low 46s. I mean, his pace is ridiculous. So um, I'm gonna try and now break away from Grosjean and catch up to the two cars in front. Perez and Sainz, I believe. And then we'll take it from there. There we go, 47.5, a much more respectable lap time. I had to push though for that lap. That was uh, me pretty much on the limit, but that's much more like the kind of pace we need to be setting this race. And uh, that should get us in the mix, you know, for lead pace. Let's try and catch up to Sainz and Perez, who we're now starting to really catch up at a rate of knots. Okay, my ERS doesn't seem to be burning up that much, so I'm going to keep it in hot lap from now on. The Fleur sets the pace, you can see that, 46.2, incredible lap time. I'm going to keep it in hot lap though, and see how the ERS manages itself. Whilst me running at max engine mode, I'm going to keep on using overtake on the main and back straight. So let's see if that gives us a bit more of a pace advantage, and that finds me those extra couple of attempts to really pick up the pace even more if possible. We match our lap time there pretty much on the 10th off, and we're now within a second of Carlos Sainz. Let's try and get past these two guys as soon as possible and as quickly as possible to keep the race efficient. Okay, I'm all over the back of Carlos here. Sainz actually goes defensive. I can't see the apex, but Sainz gets out of shape. We just scraped through. Did I get any damage there? No, I didn't, luckily enough. Sainz came back on the apex there and was a little bit of contact, luckily though. No damage to my car, which is good. And I can rate to a difference of pace by keeping it in hot lap mode, so we're definitely a lot faster here. Now let's catch up to Perez and try and get past him as soon as possible here. Right, here we go, through the final corner. Right on the back of the Force India. We get the traction down. We're gonna power up, here we go. Down the inside of turn one. And we're gonna breeze past Perez this time, unlike with Grosjean, job done quite easily. And we're gonna pull in front, back onto the apex, and onto the racing line. So P9, up next Nico Hulkenberg, quite a gap, but the cars up next are the train. So if I can close up this gap now, it's important to find my pace and uh, keep this going now. These are important laps. I'm not sure if you have to, you have to stop in a wet race. I'm not really sure what the rules are, to be honest. It's, I'm, I can't, I'm guessing you do have to stop because I'm not trying to go to the end on these tires. Maybe I'm not really sure. I've not really seen my tires a lot for tire wear, but it might be an option. If not, if I do have to pit, I'm going to try and catch up to the train and then pit in and undercut them, hopefully, all of them, hopefully. That's what I'm trying to look for here. Personal best, 47.3. The club just set 46.0. So uh, he's going to be untouchable this race. We can't get nowhere near him. The best we can do is second place. So let's keep going here. Strong lap already. Got a nice gap out of Perez. Let's keep pushing. There we go. That's more like it. 46.6. Finally managed to find some pace in that middle sector, which is why I was losing a lot of time, but we're still a long way off. We're close on a 45.9, but that, those lap times are more like, if we can do that all the time, that'd be great, but that is going to be very hard to match lap after lap. But I'm going to try. At the minute, I think this is going to be a no-stop race based off of tire wear and AI strategies. No one's pitting yet. Um, so yeah, this could be realistic. A no-stop race could be a thing. Okay, that's good. We matched the lap, which is good. I was starting to really close down Nico Hulkenberg, which is good. And uh, Leclerc just set a 45.6, so he's a whole second faster again, but still, let's forget about that. We are closing in on this train now, quite rapidly, which is good progress. And uh, Hulkenberg's going to be the start of that, pretty much. Look at that train. Ericsson's really starting to bunch them up now, big time. And uh, we've still got a good pace here. We're closing in bit by bit, but I need to find more pace somehow, but I just don't have much more in the tank. My rears are starting to wear out a little bit too much for comfort. Uh, that was a good first sector. I don't know where that came from, but I've been looking for that time all race long. I think turn three, which was, you know, where the AI normally go flat pretty much, I managed to go a lot quicker that time around. And we've gained a hell of a lot of time. And we've also caught up the Hulkenberg quite a bit here. Let's put me on the back of him very soon. Let's stay focused. Right into the final corner. Good run through there. We match our personal best. I lost time over the rest of the lap, but that's fine. Here we go then in the slipstream of Holkenberg using some rich mix. And I think we've got enough to get the run on him down towards turn one or turn two, should I say. Unless he locks up, makes a mistake maybe, not quiet. He's uh, seemingly unfazed for now. Oof, back end is getting very loose on it all of a sudden. Gotta be careful. 
You can see how much he pulls away there through turn three. On the back straight. We are gaining on Nico here. He's not running as high engine mode. If it was in the draw, I could have gone for it there, but in the wet, there's just not enough grip on off the racing line, should I say. I'm going to try and stay close to him, though. Maybe passing in this very slow technical section, sector three. But the pressure's on now. I need to get past him as soon as possible to keep on chasing after the red ball, which is in front. Because we're making good progress. The, the guys in front, the train is starting to pick up pace. Ericsson's starting to pick up the pace and starting to break up that train a little bit. So it's important to get this move on Hulkenberg done so I can pull away and chase after it. Good traction there. A little bit sloppy on the second half, but we are going to get our nose alongside Hulkenberg. There we are. We're going to power past. Come on. Give it to me. There we go. I'm going to just edge in front. I'm locking up. I'm running deep. Need to slow it down. There we go. Just about got that un, un, under control. So we now go through the tricky turn three. I keep on wobbling, but we've got this under control now. Let's try and pull away from Hulkenberg. And chase after Max Verstappen. Personal best. There we go. 46.2. Leclerc sitting low 45. So we're kind of matching what he does, but we're a second off, if that makes sense. But as he comes down lap time, so do we. I think that's just fuel burning off as well. But I mean, we're showing good improvement here. And we're closing in on Verstappen. You can visibly see how close he is now. I want to try and get past him as soon as possible. Another personal best. Having to use a little bit of lead mix now in the final set. We get on target for fuel coming into the race. I think we will be able to get Verstappen. But after that, I don't think we're going to be able to get his team. I think his teammate is a little bit too far away. Unless we somehow find more pace and the guys in front slow down even more. Man, that was a sweet drift. Oh, man, I love that corner. Down to a 46.1 now. I'm on the limit. Not much more to give. I can maybe dip into a 45, but we are really struggling now. And uh, this happens just not coming to me that quick. Purple final sector actually. 46-0. I'm also starting to run pretty low on battery now, so I've got to be careful. I've got to try and manage it a little bit. This was a strong lap. We found six tenths in the first sector alone, and we carried that over for the rest of the lap. A 45.3. The closest set of personal best and a fast lap of the 44.7. I mean that's right up there with the best race pace you could possibly do. I'm about to run out of VRS though, as we close in on the snapping here, so let's try and size him up for a move. Right into the final corner here. Can we get a bit of traction down and get a run of the snapper potentially? Let's see what the Red Bull's like for straight line speed. Two laps to go. Let's try and put Max under some early pressure. We are gaining here. I think we've got enough. Had a look. Max goes defensive. It's a little bit hot on the brakes. We slip underneath. We just avoid front wing damage. And the move is done. And we are now P7 in the Russian Grand Prix. Nice little move there. Hate that corner now. I really do. My tyres are gone on the rear. Let's bring this one home. One and a half laps to go. I'm going to try my hardest to catch up to Ricardo, but I don't think we've got enough. Right, well, Charles Leclerc wins. We're going to bring this one home. In P7, it seems. Just going to try and negotiate the final sector, make sure we don't run out of fuel. I'm going to run a higher gear than I normally would through here just to make sure we get the fuel back on target what I can hope for is maybe a couple of penalties here or there but we did close down to Ricardo quite a bit to be fair on, that, on those last two laps but not enough Alonso is going to get a podium which is good his first podium of the season I believe and his best result of the season P3 so fair play to him as we try to get past Sergio Sorokin here I'm kind of getting held up an absolute treat I'm going to eventually get past though make the move there we go and P7 for us in that race just considering we started from P17, it's a good recovery, good pace, just a shame we didn't qualify better due to the glitch. Brilliant stuff from Salva today, what a superb victory. So, Ant, how exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? Well, they clearly have a car that comes alive in the kind of conditions we were dealing with today. It's a very balanced package in the wet, and what that means is that the drivers have confidence to attack. And having that confidence gets you on the power earlier, it lets you brake later, and can put you a long way up the road. 
Looks like they're on their way out to the podium now, and what a result this is, and what a popular one with the crowd as well. Great stuff to see the Sauber team on top here today. You were cutting your way through the field during the race. Did you feel comfortable in the wet weather today? It's been quite an eventful championship, hasn't it? Do you think you were lucky not to end your race with that crash? Great, well that's everything. Right, so there we have it then, looking at the final race results. Leclerc wins at Russia once again, and Ericsson comes home P2, making that Sauber 1 2. Alonso ultimately couldn't get past Marcus Ericsson the entire race, and uh, Vettel and Kimi Raikkonen fourth and fifth, and then also Ricardo P6. If you look at the fastest laps, though, we were the second fastest, and uh, by quite some way, was the only one that could maybe take a fight to Leclerc today, but even then, I think Leclerc was just too quick, even in the wet conditions for me. Then Max Verstappen P8, Nico Hulkenberg P9, and Sergio Perez rounds off the points. Signs just missing out along with Grosjean. Ocon, Hamilton, Gasly, Bottas, Magnussen, Sorotkin and uh, Lance Stroll there and Brendan Hartley also two laps down there towards the back of the pack but now let's move into the driver standings and after that race we drop back to 94 points behind Charles Leclerc, a big big L for us this weekend. Fernando Alonso with the podium though, he jumps up into the top nine, he gets past Carlos Sainz overtaking his fellow countrymen and splits the Renaults. So Alonso last two races with a fourth and a third, scoring some decent points and that's going to help him out massively and hopefully he can solidify the eighth place getting past Hulkenberg sometime soon. But with that being said and uh, looking at the way the race has gone, it's not been a good one for us here today. The Constructors Championship you can see there we are pretty comfortable third now and uh, Sauber are pretty much guaranteed to win now. So yeah, the championships are looking pretty decided in my opinion. Even the drivers' championship, I think, uh, I can't see a way around this. I got to be honest. The Clare is an absolute machine, and the Sauber is just—it gives him everything he needs, and he's so so quick. So. Uh, We'll see what happens. We'll keep on trying. We'll keep on chipping away. Uh, for the next race, there won't be no upgrades because I don't have enough R&D points. So we need to try and save those and put them away for one big upgrade package and uh, see if we can get some luck there. But with that being said, hope you guys did enjoy this episode of Career Mode. And if you did enjoy it, then please do drop a like and also get subscribed for daily Formula 1 content and turn on notifications to not miss a single video from me. Finally, check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them. But other than that, guys, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in my next episode very soon. But until then, let's goodbye from me.